Okay, welcome back for another uh, video lecture uh, on aquifer properties. And so we've talked about porosity in the last couple videos. Uh, I showed you how to measure it in the lab in the last video. Uh, and in this video, I will move on to discuss specific yield and retention and specific retention. Okay, what are those things? Okay, so the idea here is, well, we've been talking about porosity a lot, uh, but all the water doesn't, you know, flow out of the voids. That's really the essential concept here. So imagine you take a sponge, right, and you fill it up with water and you let it sit on your um, counter, right? Some of the water will pour out of it readily, but some of the water is going to be retained in the sponge, right? The sponge will, will remain wet. Well, this is what the specific retention part of it is, is that, you know, water that stays in the sponge be, be, uh, despite the fact that you let it drain. The specific yield is the opposite. The specific yield is that water that readily flows out, you know, uh, on its own by gravity only, basically. And these are the two definitions that you want to think about. So again here, if we look at the change in water elevation, so let's say we're draining um, a part of the aquifer, right, uh, and about h size h drained now the amount of water that drained right is h times the porosity now in reality again like i just explained it's not really porosity it's specific yield right so some water actually stays be behind right as pellicular water or by capillarity and so there's still some water in there so the actual amount of water you get is not quite porosity times, you know, H, but it's really SY. So in other words, the porosity itself is SY plus the retention, specific retention. Okay, so you can split the porosity between that water that readily flows out by gravity and water that is retained in the sponge soil formation. Okay. Again, specific yield is the ratio of the volume of water that drains from a saturated sample because of gravity to the total volume of the rock, right? So it's again a percentage, it's just like porosity. And then again, the corollary is the specific retention is the water that is left behind or that stays in the sponge in the soil uh, that is attached to the matrix as a film around the grains. And again, the porosity itself is just the sum of the two, right? So if you have a 20% porosity, right? Uh, maybe the specific yield is 17%, 15%, and the retention is 5%, okay? Here's a, an illustration of what the specific yield is for different types of um, formation of, of sediment. So again, from the gravel to the sand and the silt, you can see that again, 20% being, you know, as I said before, right, for porosity, 20 to 30%. So a specific yield is essentially porosity minus that pellicular water, so it's close to each other, uh, and you can see it's around 20%. One thing of note here, and this is why I'm showing this graph, it doesn't change that much with grain size, right? So that's what I've explained before, right? The, the size of the grain doesn't really matter to porosity, right? It's a scale-free parameter. Go back to that video um, if, you, uh, if you want. So from gravel to sand, right, it's around 20 to 25%. It's not much different. Now look at the clay, though. Clay has very, very little uh, specific yield. Doesn't it doesn't mean that it has a low porosity. Actually, clay sometimes has a lot of porosity because the clay particles are usually kind of laminar and they are charged. They have little charges here around them, right? That kind of pushes them apart. So by electrostatic forces. So the porosity may be high, but the particles are so small and, and so laminar that it retains a lot of water within it. So the water that gets in that uh, clay layer is trapped there and can't leave it, right? So again, porosity and specific yield are two different things, even though they're usually, you know, similar for most of the uh, grains. In the clay, this doesn't hold true anymore, right? So the water that is trapped in here has a hard time living, okay? And that's why the specific yield is very small and the specific retention very high, right? So this concludes uh, this uh, short video on specific yield and specific retention. Thank you.